I said, God, he wasn't there. You know that, and he knows that. So why are you asking such a question? How many of you were here when God built the earth? Was anybody here when God made the earth? Only a couple of Mormons, okay. Yeah. You're in your second existence, I understand, okay. No, you were not here when God built the earth. So kids, this is going to be complicated, so listen carefully, okay. Since you were not here when God made the earth, <clears throat> that means that God is older than you are. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. See, Job had the same problem that most of us have. He did not have a good appreciation for who God was. Come to chapter 40. God said, Behold now, behemoth. Well, what on earth is a behemoth? Well, whatever it was, Job could behold it. Because God never tells you to do something you can't do. See, God would not say, Behold now, behemoth, if he could not behold now, behemoth. That's deep theology, I know, okay, but think it through, all right? Now, some reference Bibles say behemoth is probably the elephant or hippopotamus. Oh, that is ludicrous. I believe behemoth is the long-necked dinosaur. Now, there are 13 different long-necked dinosaurs, okay? There's the brachiosaur, the apatosaur, the cetosaur. It's got the big seat, okay? There's the blondosaur. You have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? Uh, I, say, I think behemoth is the brachiosaurus. It says he eats grasses and ox. Some people say, hey, my Bible says elephant and elephants eat grass. Well, duh, bunny rabbits eat grass too, okay? A lot of animals eat grass, right? Look at the next verse. His strength is in his loins, his force is in the navel of his belly. The biggest part on him is his belly. And they say, well, elephants have a big belly. Yes, I know. Hippopotamus have a big belly. Brachiosaurus had a big belly. He has a big belly. So does he. <laughs> One of the knuckle bones from a brachiosaurus. Now this will be kind of complicated, so listen carefully. The reason he had such big toe bones is because he had big toes. How many can figure that out with no help? Four, five, six, okay. And the reason he had those big toes is because he had a big foot. There's a kid taking a bath in a brachiosaur footprint. The picture's on the book right here on the steps. And the reason he had that big foot is because he had a big leg to hold up. His front leg is 20 feet tall. That's about what it boils down to, isn't it? I mean, have you ever stopped and really thought how, who you're talking to? How big is your God? Hey, is your God big enough to tell you what to do and you just simply do it without question? For instance, does God tell you what kind of clothes to wear? Now, First Timothy says the women should dress modestly. See, my daddy always said if you're not in business, don't advertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. God created the living creatures, every living creature. God made the dinosaurs. He made them. And Satan said, you know, there has to be some way I can use dinosaurs against God. But he couldn't fool Adam, not with dinosaurs. <laughs> Adam named them. Can you imagine the devil walking up to Adam and saying, hey, Adam, did you know dinosaurs lived millions of years ago? <laughs> Adam would say, are you stupid? There's one in the backyard right there eating on a cherry tree. I mean, what do you mean millions of years ago? The devil couldn't fool Noah. I mean, he fed him every day. But for the next 4,000 years, dinosaurs became more rare. They were dying off or being killed off or whatever, you know, some of the reasons they died. And by 1809, they were just nearly extinct. And somebody found the bones and put one together. 1809, first dinosaur that we know of, put together for a museum. Satan was there that day and said, wow, here's my chance. These critters have always lived with man. I know that, and God knows that. But these people don't know that. So the devil said, I think I'm going to tell everybody they lived millions of years ago. And if they believe it, it'll make them doubt the Bible. And boy, has it worked good. You know, for the last 200 years, kids have gone to kindergarten and they get a book like this. I can read about dinosaurs. Would anybody like to take a wild guess at what the first sentence in the book says? Millions of years ago. Hey, uh, how many kids are being taught that in your town? At your expense, you are paying for the destruction of the next generation. Now, maybe that doesn't bother you, but it bothers me. And if you think I leave my gorgeous wife and travel all over the world, been gone, let's see, over 200 days a year for years now, flew 215 times last year, spoke over 900 times. If you think I leave my gorgeous wife and my four grandkids because I like being gone, you are mistaken. Okay, they would much rather be home. 
But there's a war going on. Somebody's got to warn the troops. Hello, to arms, the British are coming, you know, pick up your gun, guys, let's go. There are kids by the billions being brainwashed on this planet. And Satan is using... That's a big river. There's a lake in Scotland called Loch Ness. Has anybody ever heard of Loch Ness? Loch Ness is a huge lake, 24 miles long, a mile to a mile and a half wide, up to 900 feet deep. 1933, the first year the road was put in, there were 52 separate sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. Hmm. This author said there have been 9,000 reported sightings today. Now, that was back in the 1960s when this book was written. Today, it's over 11,000 reported sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. 11,000. Of course, some are fakes and frauds, okay? Discover, I wouldn't trust the, you know... Uh, Weekly World News, you know, where <laughs> they got all this weird stuff in there. But Sir Peter Scott's a member of Parliament. He said he saw it. He believes it's a plesiosaur. Almost everybody that sees it says it's this animal right here, a plesiosaur. Long neck, four big flippers. One guy wrote a book, and he said, some people think Nessie is a plesiosaur. There's one thing wrong with this theory. Plesiosaurs are believed to have become extinct 70 million years ago. Oh, is that what's wrong with the theory? <laughs> I think this evolution theory has got to be the biggest hindrance to scientific research there's ever been. Okay? You look at the facts, forget your theories, look at the facts and come up with your conclusions. Okay? We can go all day about Loch Ness Monster, but they said this photograph was a fake, and it probably was, but I don't know. It's interesting, they waited till the last guy involved died to announce it's a fake. Now how do you check out the truth? But anyway... There are other lakes besides Loch Ness. There's Loch Lochy, Loch Morar. There are many other lakes reporting creatures. There's one called the Morguar, the Cornish Sea Serpent by England. The English Channel has many reported sightings of a creature like this. In 1749, <coughs> in England, a creature was caught, resembling in some degree an alligator, but having two large fins. The body was covered with impenetrable scales. It had five rows of teeth. 1934, this thing washed up on the beach in Normandy, France. There's a guy... Uh, Standing there looking at it for scale. Uh, a couple of scientists reported this creature swam past their boat in Brazil in 1905. They reported the whole thing in a scientific journal. The creature had a long neck, <coughs> six feet long, <coughs> two feet high. Um, the dorsal fin, I'm sorry, was six feet long, two feet high, a small head on a neck about seven or eight feet long. Two experienced British naturalists reported the thing. And again, we can go all day on reported sightings. This thing, in 1977, a Japanese fishing boat pulled this up in their net. It was 32 feet long, 4,000 pounds. They said, what on earth is that? The captain said, I don't know, but it stinks. <laughs> when they set it down on the deck, it broke in half, and pus oozed out everywhere. So they made a bunch of sketches, took a bunch of pictures, and shoved it overboard. A special stamp was made for Japanese mail, 1977. Now, some people argue that it might have been a basking shark, and I agree, it might have been a basking shark. But the fishermen on board said, we know what basking sharks are, we don't think it is, okay? Basking sharks, they tend to rot away, leaving the head part behind, but there's a basking shark right there. Okay? It could have been a basking it doesn't matter to me. They said the protein is 96% similar, yes, I know, but nobody's ever seen plesiosaur protein, okay, to know what it's supposed to look like. Humans and apes are similar, but have many differences also. Anyway, there's a lot of arguments about that. It doesn't matter to me, but some people get all bent out of shape because they even mention, you know, the Japanese catch of 1977. Russians report a creature in a lake up there. They're called Mystery of the Lake here. A it will look like a dinosaur washed up on the beach in Russia in 1994. It was 39 feet long. This thing apparently <clears throat> is a doctored photo of a shark. Somebody with Photoshop, you know, made it look like a, a plesiosaur, but actually it's a doctored photo. But... Uh, so be careful. There's plenty of frauds out there, no question. But the existence of a fraud or counterfeit does not disprove the existence of the original. Right? This isn't really a science book anymore. It's a book about evolution. Somebody wants to make sure your kids believe that theory because it's part of a much bigger long-range plan toward a new world order.